Hey guys, Ryan Rose here with Habits of a Horseman coming at you with Huck's second session. So first session was a bit of an evaluation and survival, <laughs> uh, kind of figuring out uh, what he knows, what he doesn't know, all that sort of thing. And uh, the biggest thing is a little bit of pressure would send him, like he would, I would put a little input and then I would get a big response. So he was overreacting to what I was asking for. That was one of the issues. Second thing was uh, when he would overreact, it was usually go up. So he would get light on his front end and start popping up. And uh, as you can see from the picture, we get pretty excitable and rearing up. So what I learned in that session about him is, and before I get into that, I want to just make a point to say that I always try to work from where the horse is at. You know, there's, there's a whole bunch of things that, in my opinion, are good stuff to do with horses. But what are the things that will really resonate with this horse? Horses are all different. They all have different personalities. They have different experiences from whoever's worked with them or they, what they have done or haven't done, where they've been, environments. So there's a million influences that go into why a horse acts the way they act. So the more I can figure out exactly if he's learned to push through pressure or if he just hasn't learned anything. And what I discovered with him is that he had learned to kind of evade things a little bit by going up. And that's, that's a fairly common thing um, that can happen. So long story short, I'm going to ask him to put his head down um, a lot. So today's session, I've already kind of started playing with him and then I realized I should turn the camera on and do some filming. Um, what I realized is I was going to spend a lot of time doing things that would help him relax more. So first thing that I asked him to do is walk on a circle and ask him to have a nice bend through his ribs. So this is three circle game. You guys probably remember this from a circle uh, from the sessions before. You can see how much quieter he is. And I've only had him out here for about five minutes or so. So I really haven't done a lot. But see him starting to think down. He's starting to reach down a little bit. Um, if his head goes up like it did there, I'm going to lift up on this and I'm going to make it uncomfortable. I might even add pressure here with the stick. So I'm saying, you want to go up? Let me help you go up. Let's go up more until he says, you know what? I would actually rather be down. So I'm waiting to feel that in my left hand. There it is. So I started to feel his head go down. I dropped my hand. And again, this is a second session, but it doesn't take long for them to start thinking about that. Head's going, oh, head's going down, hand goes down. Head comes up, my hand goes up. There we go. So we got a little communication there. Now, let me show you what I would do if he did decide to have an episode of rearing. So if he started to rear, that would mean he was having extreme engagement in his hindquarters. So I would go to his hindquarters and I would ask them to disengage. And I would do this until he really wanted to stop. And then I'm going to finish by asking him to put his head down and back up just to increase the difficulty. Head down and back up and then settle. And so what I'm super impressed with is this is how I finished my first session with him. And this was very hard to get him to do. And now he's starting to find comfort and relief doing that. So exploding and going up is the opposite of what I'm looking for. Head down, relaxing, choosing to act like a partner. That's what I am after. So I'm going to find lots of ways to ask him to put his head down. So we started it on a circle. We did it at a standstill and in the backup. Can you put your head down? Then I started adding in, could I use a little bit of rhythmic pressure here above his head and ask him to lower his head down. So you can see he's not really good at this one yet. This one's a little harder because it's less control from my part and a little more choice on his part. So now that it's, it's taken a little bit, now I'll add in the follow the feel from the halter. Very good. So I'll just keep peppering that in as we go. Now there's one more thing I want to show you that I'm going to do to to uh, finish this. And I'm going to give a little shout out to my friend, Jake Beerbaum um, with Pear Tree Ranch. He, sh he was the person that showed me this of when you're asking a horse to go sideways, don't just do sideways, add a purpose to it and improve something like putting their head down while they're side passing. So I'm going to ask him to move off the stick here, but then with the halter, I'm just asking him. So it's like, can you go sideways and get relaxed through your head and neck? So again, he's going to find relief keeping the head down. Very good. So I just look for a little bit of rhythm in those feet. Head goes down and there you can find relief. He's a lot less reactive today, a lot less jumpy. He's starting to handle his emotions a little bit, getting more confident with what I'm asking him to do. So super happy with today's session. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more videos on how to get your horse better trained, 
things to challenge you, things to keep you accountable and more focused, um, Horseman's University is the place to go. So thehorsemansuniversity.com. If you use a discount code uh, Ryan Rose, you'll shave 15% off. So go ahead and check that out. Thanks for watching.